It's Cthulhu! Oh, check that out. Yes. Four years ago, I played a game called Ori and the Will and the Wisps. It was the follow-up to Ori and the Blind Forest. Both games, amazing. They were some of the best games I've played in the modern day of video games. Ori, the story where you're a spirit that's going through a land that is infected with just darkness and you're trying to do something and bring the light back to the dark realm that you were exploring. It's a Metroidvania and it's one of the best games that I've played in a very, very long time. Today though, we're gonna talk about Moon Studios because the, uh, the CEO, has come out with a statement against cancel culture, which I solely think he is on point with this. They have also a new game coming out called No Rest for the Wicked. And we've got to look into this because there is so much to talk about here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button because I have a feeling there's going to be much more of this in the near future. So Thomas Muller, CEO, creative director for Moon Games Studios, designer of director of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will and the Wisp and the upcoming title, No Rest for the Wicked. And he made this very lengthy post, a statement towards a game journalist over in Germany. I already know I might get myself into trouble once again for posting this, but I just replied to Maurice Weber, 42, a game journalist who is a affiliated with the German outlet GameStar. I do think it's especially important these days that we always remind ourselves to try and keep an open mind and try to understand even those who think differently than we do. Here's my response to him complaining about people who are apparently fed up by woke culture. I think it makes sense, Maurice. This base is basically a backlash against cancel culture and similar phenomenon Everyone, because everyone has had enough of that nonsense. It really is, it really is. Uh, a lot of people are, they play the victim too much and crying wolf does not actually breed or does not actually do anything for the games industry. It just brings it so much further down. I suggest you take more nuanced view, especially since you position yourself as a journalist, yet you often display a narrow-minded attitude and don't seem to question what's actually going on. And that is something we would expect from a journalist. Just because you personally haven't been affected by cancel culture doesn't mean there isn't there hasn't been a lot of foolishness happenings and it's still ongoing. And it's only a matter of time before it impacts you too. Consider this famous statement. First they came for the socialists, I did not speak out because I am not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. Instead of allowing artists just to be artists, Hollywood and most of the game developers on the West Coast has decided that it's appropriate to use films and game video games as platforms to push their own political agenda. If you argue otherwise, I would expect a journalist like you to back it up with thorough research. Moreover, it's become the norm to point fingers at others, particularly at those who may think differently from us. Rather than allowing others to be different and listening to them regard, we attack them outright. It's frankly eerily reminiscent of old WW2 bad guy tactics. Anyone who doesn't conform is ridiculed, and it's suggested that they are shamed, fired, and have careers destroyed. 
This has been the approach over the past few years, and I know plenty of those people whose careers have been devastated by trivialities and misinformation, and they continue to suffer today. You seem unaffected, and thus you refuse to consider a more open perspective. Your apparent lack of empathy in the matter is only not only up, up, unhelpful, but it also shows a considerable amount of ignorance. Allow me to also play critic for a moment. At GameStar, you do the same thing. Instead of cleaning your own house, you wield the we report and earn from our articles. But beware, those guys are the real villains. Narrative, uh, just to ensure the spotlight never falls on you, aligning yourselves just so. That precisely is why we cut you off. We find such moral dubious practices unacceptable and refuse to support them. You lack the initiative to conduct your own journalistic investigations as it seems too much work when the next clickbait article is due the next day. The sad thing is that young journalists like yourself never knew anything else. The more outrage you generate, the more clicks you get, and that's how you make a living at the expense of others, which apparently doesn't matter as long as you're seen as the good guys. I hope in the future you will approach the world with some with more skepticism and openness and truly consider both sides instead of aligning yourself with one to amplify their propaganda. It is deeply, deeply important that everything that happened over the past couple of years that we always question hidden agendas, always try to be loving and show understanding even to those we vehemently disagree with. Proper discourse is more important than ever. And journalists need to understand the responsibilities in all of this and start acting like journalists again. And this echoes exactly what is going on in the industry. This is absolutely important that this point gets put across. Thomas's response was to this particular game journalist that brings up some stuff going on in woke culture where you get you go onto steam and you see discussion and people are asking i heard this game is woke is it true and this is in in terms for hades too uh the saddest part of modern gaming discourse with every new game there has to be a discussion on steam form about whether it has evil wokeness here about a brilliant masterpiece hades 2 he, he's claiming Hades 2 is a brilliant masterpiece. Guys, I saw a black guy uh, and a guy in a wheelchair need input. So the guy in the wheelchair is a god that has a club foot. Um, but then we had articles saying that that was hotness in video games. People were saying that this is the type of sex appeal that should be there versus Stellar Blade. So this was a completely different argument and why people are asking if the game is woke. And it really does seem that the narrative design behind it is towards that woke DEI sort of situation that nobody wants, nobody's willing to have it anymore. And that is why we have Thomas here making these statements about cancel culture. You have people going out there and if you don't agree with this type of thing, it, it, that if you want to stand up against these types of things, you get cancelled. People will come out of the woodwork and suddenly brigade your, your employment, YouTube, everything else and say you are not allowed to say these bad things because we don't agree with you. No, there's discourse and, that, and this is something I've said for a while, discourse needs to happen. Let's challenge the ideas. We're not going to challenge the people saying these things, but challenge the ideas. Have a discussion. Talking like real people is no longer allowed by the, the people that are upholding the tenets of wokeness. And that is the problem with it all. You, you want to explain your side of it, but at the same time, it's tokenizing and victimizing and creating these mythos that just don't exist in video games and putting people up on a pillar that didn't earn it. Right? You look at the Mary Sue, uh, when, when you look back to Star Wars with Rey, especially when they made her to be this very powerful woman in the show with no work up towards it. That was the biggest problem that people had with Star Wars. No one has a problem that Rey was a powerful Jedi. But what we want is a story that actually leads up to her actually earning that place in 
Jedi history. Anyway, when it comes down to it, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here, and I will see you again very soon.